All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. What I'm doing here is I'm going to be installing a tub and shower. You know, it's all one unit. This is it right here. I picked it up at uh, the big box stores. Um, nothing fancy. This is like the cheapest ones that they had. Um, so, we originally wanted a shower in here, a tub and shower combination. Um, but I didn't have enough time to get all my measurements put in here prior to them pouring the concrete. Um, the guy originally told me that he wasn't going to pour the concrete for a couple weeks because he was backed up or something. And I said, fine, that'll give me enough time to figure out where my drain's going to go and everything. Um, but he calls me up like the next day and says, oh, I can come out tomorrow. We can... Uh, we can, you know, put the forms in and get everything uh, started. And I said, well, all right, just do it. So now that the concrete is, I, I barely had enough time to put my uh, line in here. I put a line under the concrete, a three quarter inch water line to where I knew where my sink area was going to go. And I kind of eyeballed everything and just took some quick measurements of where that's going to go and the quick drain going down under the concrete and out the back here. And then I just, you know, left it alone. But I didn't have enough time to figure out where the shower was gonna go or any, anything like that. So if you're in a situation like that or have a building and you wanna put a shower in, what you're gonna have to do is build it up off the ground like this. These are two by eights, so it's roughly um, eight inches off the ground plus the sheet of plywood I'm going to put on top of this here. Um, once that's all figured out, what I did here is I screwed some long deck screws in and into the studs to hold it to hold this in place. What I'm going to do now is put my sheet of plywood in. I already figured everything out for the plywood where my drain is going to go and everything. So let me show you that next. All right, next I have my sheet of plywood that's gonna go on top. I already cut out where the tub's going here like this. Drain's gonna go here and out to the back side of the uh, building. So, and like I said, tub's going here, drain here, and then out here. Now what I have to do is uh, screw this down and then we're going to mount the tub on here. I already had the tub mounted on here and I marked off where certain things are going to go like for the pads and stuff like that. I'm going to show you that next. The first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this down to this, uh, this base here. Now just like I did with the base you got to make sure everything's pushed up against each wall and right into that corner. Okay. All right, so the bottom of the tub here, you have these pads here and here. This is the bottom of the tub. And this is the, the uh, edge here. So the only place this tub is resting are the pads and this entire edge here. In the middle here, when you step into it, uh, you can feel it creaking, making these, they like the noises, I mean the fiberglass is um, getting stressed out, put it that way. <laughs> uh, you can hear it. I checked in the manual and it says it doesn't need any support, just rest it on the pads. So the middle here needs support. Now I know a lot of people use uh, like cement, they put cement in there, or some kind of a floor leveler, something like that. Um, I found another way um, of putting support in here using foam and spray foam. Uh, I've seen it on YouTube so it's very reliable. <laughs> But it makes sense, it, it, it should work. They say it doesn't need it. I mean, I've stood in there and it feels okay. 
But just for a little extra insurance, I want to add that foam on here. So before I put the tub and shower on, um, I already had it on before and I measured a lot of things that I needed to measure. I observed a lot of things that I needed to fix, I guess you would say. So let me show you up close here what I did. All right, so here on the wall, you can see I put some, it's all up almost a three quarter inch is what it is basically. Foam here, here, and I already had it marked here and here where the pieces are gonna go, depending on the back of the uh, shower, uh, the surround part of the sh shower. Here's another piece here. That's gonna fill in the gap where the tub and shower uh, fiberglass is. And when you push on the side of the shower, it moves in and out and it's too flimsy. So what I'm going to do is once I put the shower on there, on the back side from here, I'm going to fill in the rest of the gap, which is going to be approximately three quarters of an inch to an inch. Fill it with that spray foam insulation and that'll expand and, and touch the uh, shower surround. And uh, once it hardens, the shower won't move in and out anymore. Here on the bottom of the tub, I seen how much gap there was. And I had this pink insulation that three quarter inch, the same stuff I used over here. And I also had this stuff here, which is uh, uh, pretty close to an inch and a half or something like that. But anyways, I had it laying around and I decided to use it. That lessened the gap of the bottom of the tub. Now I have basically an inch or so in the back and less than an inch here in front, maybe a quarter inch because of the taper of the tub. So I'm going to fill that all in also with spray foam. So what I did here on all the foam you see is I connected it to the studs and to the base here with liquid nails. I just squirted it in the back and um, stuck it on where I had it marked because I had this all marked where it's supposed to go. You can see where I had it marked here um, when I had this when I had the tub on here originally. Um, so now I have to wait for this to dry uh, for the next day and uh, then I'm going to install the tub and shower surround. All right, but there's one more thing I have to do before I put the uh, shower and tub combination in here. Insulation. <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself, so that's what I gotta do next. The insulation is installed. Um, the only thing we have left to do now is put the shower and tub combination in here and uh, fill in the gaps for underneath the tub and up against the wall enclosure here to give it support. All right. 
right, little by little, back and forth. And of course, you want to be careful, you know, like I have this styrofoam and stuff underneath there. Gently go over that stuff without messing it up. And uh, those pads will rest on the little pads that I put. And um, it should be all right. All right, now that we got it up against the wall, I'm going to check for to make sure it's level and plumb and everything. And then we're going to screw it in. So with my trusty level here, I'm going to make sure it's nice and level. It's good. That's pretty good. All righty. And that's good. Now, I have yet to build my wall here, but I'm not gonna do that until I'm ready for the plumbing. All right, so now I pre-drilled my holes where my studs are up here, right up here, and uh, because I don't want the uh, fiberglass cracking. Now I'm gonna use these, I think they're called lad screws. Um, they are, I'm just, these are the ones I had, they're one and a quarter inches long, but they have a low profile head on them. And they're flat on their, underneath, as opposed to like decking screws where they, they're tapered underneath the head. And I'm afraid that taper might, or could possibly crack the uh, fiberglass. Um, so I'd rather use something flat head like this. You don't have to use these kind, but uh, if you have a flat head screw that's kind of a low profile, that way, when you put the drywall on, it won't be sticking up that high, you know. So, we're just going to use these. So for some added weight, I'm going to put two buckets of uh, water in here, two five-gallon buckets. That'll keep some weight on it and uh, while I put the foam on underneath. If I can find the video that I watched of another YouTuber doing this, I'm going to post it. In the, uh, under the video in the description, all right? So what I got here is my uh, foam spray here. It's a gap filler, actually, up to three inches. Um, and the top that comes with it, the sprayer, the original red piece I took off, uh, don't need that. But what I did is I got some quarter-inch tubing. It's a quarter-inch OD with 170 thousandths ID on this tubing here and I got some pretty stiff wire here and I duct taped it on okay nice and long so I can reach underneath the shower and behind the uh, shower walls um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw this can on here and we'll be ready to spray or apply the uh, foam behind and underneath the shower
right, it's the next day. The foam has cured. The walls don't bounce back and forth anymore. Uh, everything feels solid. Let me uh, give you a peek behind here, how it looks, and underneath, uh, and how that came out. All right, again, the walls are nice and solid now. That foam also acts as an adhesive. It's very sticky, so it sticks to anything that you put it on. Um, so I'm really happy with that. All right, and in the back here, you can see I put the foam on the 2x4, and it worked out really good. And on the other side, you can see I put the uh, foam near the top there. And then again in the middle. All right, as you can see, or here maybe, that sounds solid. Before it used to bounce back and forth. It was really flimsy. But I got the stud right here and I got that foam right here. That's beautiful. So that worked out really nice. Next we got to test the, uh, the tub itself when I put my weight in there. Alright, next is the foam underneath. So it looks messy, but it's doing its job. It's in between this foam and the bottom of the tub. And this is the other end where the drain is. And that turned out really nice also. All right, now I want to take the buckets of water out of here that I put in there for the extra weight to hold it down. Now, when I used to step in here, I could feel the base uh, move, okay? So, oh wow, no. Oh, big time solid, big time. Man, it's nice. Between that and the walls now being solid. Oh yeah, much better, much easier too than uh, having to put mortar or, or uh, I've heard people putting floor leveler or some kind of something like that under there. Um, no, big time difference. This is solid. Big time. Big difference. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is all said. I am very happy now. <laughs> because these things are flimsy, you know. It's just the way they're out. You know, you can only strengthen fiberglass so much and, and still get, making it cost effective, you know, because these designs they put in there, like little shelves and things, they're nice. You can put your shampoo, whatever, on there. Uh, I don't need shampoo. <laughs> but uh, th what these are really for is mostly to keep the wall rigid and strengthen it. Um, that's why they put all these designs on these walls and stuff, to keep them more rigid. But that foam... You know, where the uh, studs are, major plus. Now when you push on a wall, it doesn't move back and forth. You know, it's solid. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy now. Worked out really good. All right, guys, so I hope this helped you out in, uh, in a future projects. You know, put a little foam under there, and it'll really make things stronger. Um, and give, give it a, a nice, solid feeling, you know. Alright guys, so thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video.